What's up everyone, welcome back to Workshop Rebuild. In today's video, I'll be working on the BMW R60 slash 5 motorcycle frame and I'll be prepping it for primer and paint. In the middle of the workshop, I also set up a makeshift paint booth. As you'll notice, I've drop sheet around the perimeter, which is hanging from the ceiling all the way to the ground. This will contain all the overspray during the paint job. I also mounted a rail to the ceiling. This way I can hang all the parts from the ceiling, which will make it super easy to paint everything. These two parts are already ready to go. So over here, I have the swing arm and the rear frame assembly of the BMW R60. On this table over here, I have a bunch of tools and products, which I'll be using in today's video. If you guys are interested in anything that you see on this table, check the links down in the description. So I'll start on the left of the table, work my way to the right. After I'm done with all those products, I'll grab the motorcycle frame and start with the prep work. So the first thing I'll look at is the glazing and spot putty. This is a very thin paste and this will be applied to various uh, rock chips and small scratches on the motorcycle frame. I'll share that with you guys in a couple minutes. If you guys would just like to see how I apply this, uh, skip ahead in the timeline and you'll see that later on in this video. Uh, to apply this paste, I will be using a flat scraper and to mix it because I do not like to just take it directly out of the tube. Um, I put it on a piece of plastic and I just mix it up and then apply it. So this will all go together. So you'll have your glazing spot putty, you'll have your scraper and you'll have a piece of plastic. Uh, this works the way I have it right here and this is usually how I do it. Now down below, um, to handle the motorcycle frame, since you don't want uh, any of your oils to go onto bare metal, you can also wear some gloves if you'd like. Um, you can use these or some thinner rubber gloves. Since we're gonna be painting, you will also need a respirator and I have the respirator by 3M. So all these products right here, you'll find down in the description. But further to the right, I also have a bundle of sandpaper. Um, this was one kit on Amazon and it was super cheap, but it's also a pretty good quality sandpaper as well. Um, you can use this dry or wet, however you like. And the grit runs from 220 all the way up to 3000 and you have around four or five sheets of every grit. So I think this is a super good deal and um, I would suggest you grab something like this yourself. Um, if you want to sand down the glazing and the spot putty, uh, you will be running something around 320 or 400. That works perfect uh, because you don't need anything smoother than that because the primer will actually fill in some of those smaller blemishes. Now off to the right, I had another idea. Instead of just grabbing some sandpaper, you can also grab these sanding sponges. Um, this was also a kit and I thought it was a really good idea because they have the regular sanding block. Uh, this one right here happens to be 220 and then it goes 160, 120, 180. 80 is very coarse. I usually use something like 220. So if you don't want to use your sandpaper, you can also use your sanding sponge. That will work, uh, especially around these radiuses on the frame. This will come in super handy. Um, since I do not want to cut this one up because this is actually the perfect size to handle, I chose this pack because it has these narrower sponges and they're the exact same grit. But what I can do is I can actually cut these up in smaller squares in case I need to get into some really tight spaces. So if there's something to sand back here, um, something towards the end uh, around the swing arm area, or even up front in this area, uh, then I can actually just go ahead, keep the main sponge and cut these up into pieces. And I can also apply some sandpaper around these um, sanding sponges because that will also work very well in case you need a certain grit. Now off to the right I also have a couple products. Something I already had on hand was acetone. Um, you can use acetone or wax and grease remover to get rid of all the dust and debris that's still on the frame um, just to prep it for your primer. Over here I chose this super acid edge primer. Um, this is actually a quality product. I've seen quite a few people use this online and I'm gonna give it a try. I've never used etch primer before, but I'm gonna try it out and uh, give you my honest review later on in this video. Um, if you guys wanna know more about this product, you guys can obviously read the back or just watch this video and stick around till later on. After I apply the super acid etch primer onto the frame, I'm gonna have to let it cure just a little bit and then I'm gonna hit it with this Duplicolor high build fleet coating. Um, supposedly this is really durable, um, it's a high solid enamel and they use this as you can see for trucks on the can. So I think this should be super durable 
and it actually is very long curing. I think it says up to seven days this has to cure fully. Um, so this will actually take pretty long. Uh, but once this is on the frame, I can actually leave it for seven days. So I'm going to be applying the primer. I'm going to leave that for a couple minutes, around 45 minutes, and then I'm going to apply the top coat right away. Um, after seven days, I'm going to have to come back and apply the clear coat. This right here is a 2K Max uh, clear coat, and this is the gloss version, I believe. And if you read the back, uh, this is a two compound uh, clear coat. So you're going to have to activate the bottom and this can will um, actually run out in 48 hours. So you're going to have to use this up within 48 hours. I will share this later on in this video, how I use all these products. So if you guys are interested in that, stick around. Before I just go ahead and paint everything on this motorcycle frame, I also have to mask some things off. That's why I have a roll of masking tape. I have a knife and a scissor. This will come in super handy just to finalize the frame prep. I will be masking some things off towards the swing arm area. Um, these threads right here have to be masked off. And towards the front, I will also be masking off this area where the taper bearings will be fitted. But right now I'm gonna focus on the frame prep so I have everything set up on this table and I'll share with you guys my process. So the first thing I'm going to grab is my flat scraper. With this, I will be able to identify um, some of the pinholes and some of the damaged surfaces like this right here. And I will go all along the frame to check for imperfections, which I will have to fill with the spot and glazing putty. If you have any damaged welds, if you have any damaged tubing, and if you have any issues with your frame whatsoever, you have to address that before this stage. What I'm doing right here will just give the frame a cosmetic makeover and nothing else. So I found all the imperfections on that motorcycle frame. Now I'm gonna grab my glazing putty, smear a little bit onto this plastic surface. I'm gonna make sure I mix it up because some of these tubes right here can be sitting for a long time at your hardware store. Um, so uh, just make sure you mix it up on a plastic surface. Then I'm gonna apply it. I'm gonna wait around 25 to 30 minutes. Once it's cured, I can go ahead and sand it down. Before I apply the glazing putty onto the motorcycle frame, I will go ahead and grab my acetone. Uh, this will degrease and clean the surface of the motorcycle frame so that the glazing putty will bond properly to the metal. I successfully filled in most of the pinholes on this motorcycle frame. Now before I go ahead and sand it down, I have to wait 25 minutes or even longer. If I don't wait long enough, it will clog up my sandpaper. So I'm going to wait 25 minutes and then I'll bring you guys back. So right here is a close-up view on the frame. You will notice all the pink areas have been filled in. Um, there are quite a few pinholes around the frame everywhere a little bit. So everything has been filled in. Uh, you really want to make sure that everything is dry. If it still feels a little bit soft, uh, just wait another 10 minutes. But everything on this frame is ready to be sanded down. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab my 220 block. I can actually sand with this right away. Or what you can do is actually grab your 320 or 400, whatever you'd like, and uh, wrap it around the block and start sanding down on the frame. I'm going to go ahead and grab the 320. I'm actually going to break it in half. So I'm just going to fold it once, just like that. Fold it twice, just like that. And then I can just rip it apart. So I have two pieces now, and this works actually really good. Just put it on the block, make a little crease, nothing too hard. And on the other side, now you can use this pad as a sanding block. But what's also really nice is once you compress a little bit, it will also uh, go up against radiuses very nicely. I finished up filling in all the imperfections on that motorcycle frame right there. 
Now we can go ahead and blow everything off and wipe it down with a clean rag. Once everything is clean, I'll bring it into the paint booth and I'll tape everything off, which I do not want painted, like some threads and some machined areas where the taper bearings will fit. Everything in this paint booth right here has been taped off and wiped down so it is ready for a coat of primer. I'll give you guys a quick close up on all these parts right here and then I'll talk about the primer and paint. This right here is the swing arm. You will notice the imperfections have already been touched up and I have everything masked off which I do not want painted, especially a gasket surface and the locations for our swing arm bearings. Now over here, we have our rear frame assembly. Um, nothing has to be masked off over here because everything can just be painted. On the frame, I have masked off a couple spots as well. Um, so we have our steering lock, our taper bearings will be fit from underneath and up above. Uh, that's all masked off. And towards the back, we have some bigger threads. I taped those off because I do not have a tap to recut them. So that's why those are taped off. Down below, I also masked off the area where our foot pegs will be. Um, so the foot pegs will latch in properly towards the frame. Either than that, everything is ready to go for paint. Right here, I've got the etch primer and my top coat. I'll talk about this right away because as I'm painting, I won't be able to talk because I will have my mask on. So I'm gonna talk about the super acid etch primer. I will be applying two coats of this onto all the parts that you see right here, the swing arm, the rear frame assembly, and the main frame. It does say on the back of this etch primer, I should wait three to five minutes between coats. So that is spraying the first coat, waiting three to five minutes for the primer to flash off, and then applying a second coat. After the second coat, I should be ready for a top coat, but I do have to leave a little bit of time in between. On this can, it does say leave at least 30 minutes uh, between your primer and your top coat, and that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, over here on this can, which is the top coat, it does say wait 45 minutes. So I'm gonna wait between 30 and 45 minutes to apply the top coat. Now on the etch primer, one more important thing is you really want to apply this onto bare metal only, as well as a little bit of that glazing putty that we applied before. Um, if you do not apply this onto bare metal directly, it won't really have a, an effect because this is an acid etch primer and this will actually dig in or bond with the metal. So that's really important. Do not uh, spray this over any existing paint. It's really not worth it, probably because it'll just flake off uh, in the near future. Now, speaking of the top coat, uh, the top coat is a little bit different. I have to lay down two light coats. So once I have both primer coats on, I will lay down two light coats on the top coat. I have to wait 10 minutes in between those coats and then another 10 minutes to lay down the last coat, which will be a medium wet coat. So in total, I will have two primer coats and three top coats. So hopefully with five coats, I will have all these parts looking like new again. And once the top coat is dry on all these parts, which will be after at least 24 hours, I will go ahead and review all these parts. I will share with you guys details on all these parts and we'll see if there are any runs. If there are any runs, I will have to sand them down with a very fine sandpaper. And then we can go ahead and look at the clear coat. just finished up with the first coat of primer and I believe that's also the last coat because I ran out on primer but um, if I give you guys a close-up view right here you will notice it has covered all the bare metal and I'm really satisfied even with one coat so even though my can is empty I could have done a second coat but I think with one coat I'm safe uh, now I'm gonna have to just wait to apply the second coat, which is the top coat. So about 30 minutes have gone by, and now we'll grab my top coat. I'm gonna start over there with the frame because that's the largest part, and I'm not sure if this can will be enough, so if I start off with the frame and I end up with the swing arm, it's not too bad. I can always get another can for this little swing arm. So I'm gonna shake this up and start with the main frame.
So I'm back in the paint booth after exactly one week. It has been a very long time, but I let this black paint job on the BMW motorcycle parts fully cure. Now, before I lay down the clear coat, which will be the next step, I really have to make sure that I do not have any runs in the black paint job, that I do not have any junk or imperfections as well. So I'm gonna share with you guys the swing arm, the rear frame assembly, and also the main frame assembly. I'll give you guys some close-up views, gonna make sure we don't have any of those imperfections in our paint job, and then I'll share with you guys the next steps I'll take to lay down the clear coat. You will notice the black laid down very nice. Uh, right there, you will see even my reflection. It's not really a high gloss. It's more like a semi-gloss um, or something between semi-gloss and high gloss. Um, if you want to look for paint runs, you always want to look on the bottom end. Um, that's where your paint runs will be or even in the corners where you might have a double pass of paint. Um, over here on the swing arm, everything looks really good, even on the bottom. So I'm really happy with the swing arm. Now the rear frame assembly looks just as good. You always wanna make sure that there are no runs, that there's no junk, especially on the underside as well. Because if you're laying down a very nice paint job, you really wanna make sure everything is cleaned up. Even on the back, everything is clean. Down below, everything looks really good. So I'm really happy with the first two parts, the swing arm and the rear frame assembly. Now we're gonna go to the main part, which is the main frame assembly right here. We'll notice the front end has a lot of pipes coming into one area. It wasn't very easy to paint this section, to be honest. Um, you always have to move around right here and especially to get paint right down in there. It's very hard, but I did manage to do that. And it has covered basically everywhere, even on the underside. I'm really happy with that, as you can see. No paint runs right there. It's really important if you have any paint runs, you can use something like a 600 to sand it out, but just very lightly because you do not want to um, get rid of the black or else you'd have to uh, just touch it up with some more black paint. Um, over here and down below, no paint runs either. And towards the back, we have another um, larger area where there are some bends and some welds. Let's give you guys a close up view right here. Really happy with that, even on this side right here. It looks really good. So that right there was a close-up view on all these parts that are hung up. I did not see any paint runs, nor did I see any imperfections. Right now, since these have been sitting for about one week, I will have to clean them off before I give them a coat of clear coat. And for that, I will be using a tack cloth. I actually picked this up at the beginning of this video. I did not share the tack cloth. Um, you'll find this at any hardware store. Uh, they're usually between one to five dollars. Um, so yeah, pick up tack cloth. Uh, it is a sticky cloth and it doesn't leave any residue on your paint surface before your next coat of paint. You can also use a tack cloth between primer and paint, especially if you leave it um, for a couple of days unattended. So just take a tack cloth and wipe it down. In my case, since I want a very nice finish on the clear coat, I will be wiping everything down with this tack cloth to make sure I do not have any dust or any debris on the surface. Um, so once I'm done with the tack cloth, I will be applying the 2K clear coat right here. Um, this is a two part clear coat. There is one part which is on the top of the can and I have to activate it with this trigger on the bottom. So these two liquids mix internally and then your shelf life on this will actually only go down to around 12 to I think 24 hours. So you really have to use this up in a timely manner. And while I'm using this 2K clear coat, I'm gonna wear everything long sleeve. I have long pants on, I'm gonna wear gloves, I'm gonna put up my hoodie, I'm gonna wear a cap and even a mask because uh, this does have an isocyanate. This is not healthy for your skin, uh, so you don't wanna pick anything up. And so I would suggest if you use something like this with an isocyanate in it, uh, you should wear a long sleeve and maybe you'd wanna even wear some clothes that you'll just throw away later on. Uh, so right now I'm going to get ready for this. I'm going to use the tack cloth and clean up everything that's hung right here. And then I'll start with the clear coat.
I finished up with the clear coat in the paint booth over there and now I have the fan going so I can let this clear coat dry overnight and I'll come back in the morning and see how it looks like. That's the next day inside the shop and I let those two coats of clear coat fully dry and fully cure. Once that was done, I was able to remove all the parts from the paint booth and lay them down onto this table. But before I share with you guys some B-roll of these parts right here, I'd like to mention later on in this video, I will share with you guys my honest opinion about the products that I use in today's video, like the primer, the paint, and the clear coat. If you guys are interested in that, stick around till the end of this video. But right now, I will share with you guys some B-roll. If you guys like the finish that you see on these parts, don't forget to hit that like button down below. And if you guys have any questions, drop a comment down below as well. Don't be afraid. I hope you guys enjoyed the final finish on all these motorcycle parts. But right now I'll share with you guys my honest opinion about the paint related products that I used in today's video. The first product that we'll talk about is the spot and glazing putty. I use this to fill in dings and scratches on the motorcycle frame, swing arm and rear frame assembly. The most scratches were on the frame assembly, so I had to fill in quite a few areas. Now this works super well if you apply it very thin and it dries very fast as well. So in between 20 to 30 minutes, you can already sand this down and you could lay down your primer. I think this product is super helpful. It's also very inexpensive. It runs at around $10 and you will find the link down in the description if you'd like to have a product like this yourself for a project that you are working on. So I would highly recommend Spot and Glazing Putty if you guys do not have this at home. You can also use a very fine Bondo that works as well. Um, just don't use too much if the scratches are very fine. Now I will talk about the Super Acid Etch Primer. Um, this was the first time I used this product because I've seen many people use this online. Now the good thing about this is if you apply it to bare metal, it should actually bond with the metal, which will give you a very strong bond. I found this product to be very good. So what that means, it sprays very well, it lays down well, and it also dries in a timely manner because it is an aerosol can. Uh, the only downside I see on this can itself, or for a primer, and if you guys are painting a motorcycle frame, I just believe this spray nozzle itself, which is detachable, um, is just far too wide for a motorcycle frame. So what that means is, even though I have a very big can, I was using a lot of material that went off to the side and it didn't actually go onto the motorcycle frame itself. So if you guys would like to primer a motorcycle frame yourself, I would recommend you pick up a different nozzle, just something that's a little bit more narrow. And with that, you will use less product because I only was able to lay down one coat, which was sufficient for my products right here. As you guys saw, I covered everything with one big can, but I think if you guys have a smaller nozzle or a narrower nozzle, you should be able to still have um, a little bit more for maybe one and a half or even two coats. So uh, just, uh, Take that in consideration if you guys are uh, going to apply a super acid etch primer to your project. But right now I will talk about the top coat which was this Duplicolor High Build. I chose this product specifically because it has good characteristics like it is a high solid enamel and it is very durable. So that's the only reason why I bought this. Um, if you guys find any other product out there, um, if it's by Duplicolor or any other brand, uh, just choose that and uh, run with that. Um, this was black. I actually don't even know what it is because it still doesn't say on this can what it is, if it's semi-gloss or gloss. So if you guys are looking for a very, very high gloss finish, then you might just want to go with high gloss to then apply your clear coat. Um, this right here, I laid it down. It dried overnight and I had a look at it and it looked more like semi-gloss. Um, so if you guys are looking for high gloss, uh, this is not high gloss. That's something just to think about. And now over here, um, this one does have 439 grams and this one has 425, even though they're almost the same size. Um, this nozzle is also much finer than this one. I was able to lay down three coats with the black on all these parts and that was sufficient enough and I even have some more paint in here so I could reuse that. 
I think this paint did a very good job. It laid down very nicely and it dried in a timely manner. As you guys saw from the paint job, I can't be more happy than that, especially from an aerosol can. If I'd really want to step it up one notch further, I'd really have to buy paint and put it into my paint gun. But I think for what I spent on these two cans right here, the paint and the primer, I think it did a very good job on painting all these motorcycle parts. But now I'll talk about the clear coat itself. Um, I use this for the first time as well. This is a 2K clear coat. A lot of people even talk about this online. So well, these two products, you'll see a lot of videos online. If you guys don't want to listen to me, you guys can listen to somebody else. Uh, I use this for the first time. It is a two part um, can. So you have to activate the lower side and you gotta stir it up for at least, or mix it up for two minutes, and then you can utilize it. Um, this can will dry up within 24 to 48 hours. So if you guys ever activate this, you gotta use this in a timely manner. That's very important. Another very important thing is this is highly toxic. So you wanna have your gear on and you wanna wear a mask and just cover as much skin as you possibly can because this stuff is not healthy for you. Uh, but if you guys do all those steps and you use it, you guys will achieve a very nice finish. As you guys can see on the swing arm, it's glowing and on the frame, it's glowing as well. So I'm really happy with the finish. Um, this is much thinner than your top coat or your primer. So take that in consideration. Um, check the back of the can. It says you should spray this 10 inches away from your part. And I followed that recommendation and I did not have one run on any of these parts and I used it for the first time because um, since I'm using it for the first time, I wasn't able to try it out on anything because the can has a drying time. So um, I did not want to use this up just for test purposes because uh, if you're spending 30 bucks on a can, you want to use it for your project. So I believe this product is very good. It lays down very good. It didn't run on me, so that's another good thing. And it also holds up pretty good. I will share with you guys an update in the near future as I'm riding this. Um, if I have any chips in the near future, I can tell you if this is durable or not. But right now, I will say it applied very well. And if you guys would like to uh, choose this yourself, this is the gloss version. They also sell this in, I believe, semi-gloss or even matte. So you guys can check the links down in the description if you'd like something like that yourself. I covered all the paint related products that I used in today's video and if you guys have any questions about any products that I use right here, drop a comment down below. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, speaking of the sandpaper and the sanding sponges, those performed really well and if you guys would like to pick something like that up yourself, check the links down in the description. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys thought it was very helpful to you, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. It helps this channel grow a little bit but it also gives me feedback if I'm doing a good job. So I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in an upcoming video.